today's topic is stretch reflex it is monosynovatic type stimulus for this reflex is stretch to muscle examples are knee jerk ankle jerk bicep jerk and tricep jerk now reflex arc of stretch reflex afferent limb consists of receptor and afferent nerve receptor is muscle spindle and afferent nerve two type of nerve fibers group 1a and group 2 afferent nerve fibers emerging from muscle spindle travel along the spinal nerve and enter into the spinal cord through the dorsal root and send branches to every alpha motor neuron that goes to muscle from which the primary ending 1a originated now center for this reflex is ventral gray horn area where afferent nerve ends and synapses directly with the alpha motor neuron efferent limb consists of efferent nerve and effector organ efferent nerve is basically axon of alpha motor neuron form the efferent nerve fiber which leave the spinal cord through ventral root and supply skeletal muscle fiber effector organ both extensor and flexor muscles now a reciprocal innervation in stretch reflex in this figure you can see this is spinal cord okay gray matter and this is white matter okay now dorsal horn and ventral horn okay and in ventral horn there is a alpha motor neuron and inhibitory interneuron now here this is flexor group of muscle and this is extensor group of muscle now what is reciprocal innervation in stretch reflex so first we should know stretch reflex so when there is a any stretching of one group of muscle fiber occurs okay there is a stimulation of muscle spindle occurs as we know that muscle spindle is a receptor which is present in muscle so now when there is a stretching it leads to stimulation of muscle spindle and center portion of muscle spindle is sensory portion so it sends signal through group 1a fibers primary sensory ending into the dorsal gray horn of spinal cord okay and stimulates alpha motor neuron okay stimulates alpha motor neuron and alpha motor neuron sends signal to the same fiber from which primary stimulation arrives okay so now there is a contraction of this group of muscle so okay so in this figure here flexor group of muscles are contracted but you can see here along with this stimulation of alpha motor neuron this fiber also stimulates inhibitor interneuron okay inhibitor interneuron b so when there is a stimulation of inhibitory interneuron it releases inhibitory neurotransmitter like gaba and it inhibits activity of alpha motor neuron which supplies extensor group of muscle okay so there is a no contraction of extensor group of muscle so in this condition there is a flexion of joint occurs okay so flexion becomes possible so one group flexor group of muscles are contracted and simultaneously extensor group of muscles are inhibited due to this reciprocal innervation in stretch reflex now dynamic stretch reflex when muscle is stretch suddenly sudden increase in a length of spindle receptor and it stimulates primary nerve endings group 1a powerfully and they discharge most rapidly while the muscle is being stretched and transmits strong signal to the spinal cord and it causes very strong reflex contraction of same muscle from which signals are 
originated this is known as a dynamic stretch reflex examples are knee jerk and ankle jerk now static stretch reflex when muscle is stretch slowly and kept stretch signals are continuously sent through primary and secondary nerve ending supplying the nuclear chain fibers because as we know that nuclear chain fiber it is intrafusal fibers responsible for static stretch okay so it sends signals about static stretch to the spinal cord now static stretch reflex play important role in control of posture for example when person is standing gravity cause continuous stretch on anti gravity muscle and making them to remain in a contracted state okay so this is the best example of static stretch reflex now what is the role of gamma motor neuron so in stretch reflex when muscle is stretched firing rate of primary ending one a group increases it leads to reflex contraction of muscle by increase alpha motor neuron activity and that's why there is a contraction of extra fusal muscle fibers but due to this contraction of extra fusal muscle fibers muscle spindle become slack slack and decreasing firing rate of group 1a fibers because of this slacking it is known as a unloading of muscle spindle so it is functionally disadvantages because of because the cns stops receiving information about the rate and exchange of muscle shortening by the activity of gamma motor neuron this unloading is prevented and it causes striated pole of intrafusal fiber of muscle spindle to shorten along with the shortening of extra fusal muscle fiber during muscle contraction so intrafusal fibers remain stretch during the muscle contraction okay so what is the role of gamma motor neuron it causes shortening of polar end of intrafusal muscle fibers okay so it remains stretch during muscle contraction and that's why center portion uh, is basically a sensory portion as we know and it remain in stretch and con it sends continuously signals to the spinal cord dynamic gamma motor neurons it innervates striated pole of nuclear big fibers thus when they are fired only nuclear big fibers shorten nuclear big fibers are responsible for phasic activity static gamma fibers primarily innervate the striated pole of nuclear chain fibers when they are fired only nuclear chain fiber shorten and nuclear chain fiber are responsible for static activity like maintenance of posture now what is length servo mechanism gamma motor neuron mediated change in length of intrafusal fibers form so called length servo mechanism and it is a system of a negative feedback so when uh, there is a stimulation of gamma motor neuron okay so it supplies the polar end of intrafusal muscle fibers so there is a shortening of polar end of intrafusal muscle fibers and due to this shortening there is a increase stretching over the center portion and due to this uh, stretching of center portion they send signals through primary and secondary of friend okay to the spinal cord and there is a stimulation of alpha motor neuron and there is a contraction of muscle fiber okay so this is length servo mechanism now a role of coactivation of alpha and gamma motor neurons and during a normal voluntary movement for example lifting a weight active shortening of extra fusal fiber would relieve tension on a muscle spindle means unloading of muscle spindle because of slacking of spindle so decrease 
primary discharge to the spinal cord and during voluntary contraction motor control system causes alpha gamma coactivation and prevent this type of unloading of muscle spindle during muscle contraction role of gamma loop it is theoretically possible that cns is capable of initiating movement directly by stimulating only gamma motor neurons using a pathway called gamma loop okay so there is a direct stimulation of gamma motor neuron from higher centers okay and due to the stimulation of gamma motor neuron they directly uh, means innervate as we know that it innervates the polar ends of intrafusal muscle fiber so there is a shortening of intrafusal muscle means polar end of intrafusal muscle fiber and due to this shortening there is a stretching over the center portion and it sends signals to a uh, primary and secondary of into the spinal cord and then contraction of uh, extrafusal muscle fibers uh, due to uh, alpha motor neuron activity okay so this is gamma loop okay higher control of stretch reflex so stretch reflex can be controlled by uh, three means uh, three mechanism control of afferent primary type of discharge control of gamma efferent discharge and control of alpha motor efferent discharge so first uh, control of afferent primary type discharge the higher center control it by presynaptic modulation of sensory input control of gamma efferent discharge direct modulation of gamma neuronal activity it is known as a centrifugal control so there is a role of motor tracks okay so there is a facilitatory area in the brain examples like brain stem discharge is spontaneously in response to afferent input and this increases discharge of gamma motor neuron and stretch reflex becomes hyperactive so facilitatory area basically facilitates the stretch reflex and it becomes hyperactive inhibit area of the brain like a reticular formation it inhibits the gamma efferent neuron discharge another area of the brain like cerebral motor cortex and cerebellum it inhibits the stretch reflex by stimulating the inhibitory reticular formation so this is centrifugal control so in this figure you can see higher control of stretch reflex a that is presynaptic modulation of sensory primary afferent one a sensory input b direct action on alpha okay direct action on alpha motor neuron and c it is modulation of gamma gamma motor neuron activity through centrifugal control so at three level this stretch reflex can be controlled okay so some brain area having a facilitatory influence over the stretch reflex and some have negative effect okay so like motor cortex basal ganglia okay then cerebellum then inhibitory reticular formation having a inhibitory influence over stretch reflex okay facility a reticular formation having positive or stimulatory effect over the stretch reflex so it is facilitatory facility to stretch reflex now other factors which uh, influence gamma efferent discharge like uh, anxiety uh, during anxiety there is an increased discharge and it leads to unexpected movement due to increased discharge stimulation of skin a noxious agent uh, increases gamma discharge to ipsilateral flexor muscle spindle and decrease decreases that to accessor and produces the opposite pattern in opposite limb and gender sex menover it also increases gamma efferent discharge 